What's up guys, Johnny here, welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about this little device here, it's the RF Power Meter version 2 by Immersion RC, and I want to let you know why this is invaluable as a race director, real helpful as a, as a racer, and even helpful for those guys flying, doing flippity floppities, flying bandos, and doing that freestyle. Anyways guys, let's break this thing open, I want to share my thoughts with you guys, and uh, let's check it out. Alright guys, so right here you have the Immersion RC RF Power Meter version 2. Inside the box, you only get a few little things here. Um, so first off, right here in the middle, you have the actual power meter by itself. Here you have a whip antenna, which you can attach to it for reading uh, from a distance. So this way, it's meant to be a very quick way to test power meters. So you, you scan beep, beep, beep across three different quads. allows really quick readings. And then the last one here is a female to female SMA connector. Uh, so the way this works is you actually can attach it to the RF meter and then you can plug this into a VTX and read the power off that VTX. So the way this is designed to be used is you actually use it in this mode first, connect it to a quad that you, that you want to test, power it up, set the frequency, scan, make sure it's transmitting at the power you need it to be at. At that point, you can actually pull this off put this one on and then use that as your basis. So since I know one quad's good, I'll scan that one and then from then on I can compare it to others and see if they're overpowered, underpowered, or how the two compare to each other. Anyway, I wanna show you roughly how that process works right here. All right, here is a, uh, here is my racing quad or one of my racing quads. This quad is currently set to 5,800 as its channel and it's currently transmitting at 25 milliwatts. This is a pretty recent um, TBS Unify. I used this at a recent race. Last time I tested it, it was outputting about 20 milliwatts according to the tester. I'm gonna do that test right here right now. So anyway, I'm gonna take my tester here, put this back on it, fire it up. All right, so if I click the button once, it brings me to this menu. At this point, it lets me set a few different things like what the megahertz is that it should be testing for, what the attenuation should be, and how long to be testing it for, and also should I be looking for the average or the peak output. So this is all set for what I want on my quad. If I hit the back button, I'm back to this testing mode. So what I'm actually gonna do is connect this directly to my VTX. Grab a battery. And then let it settle in. So the way this mode works is it actually comes pre-calibrated from the factory so that it should be accurate reading what the milliwatt output is. And you can see right here, it's actually showing 25 milliwatts exactly. Um, falling down slightly, but it's pretty much exactly 25 milliwatts at 5800, which is exactly what I expect. So that's a real good result. That's only, this is a VTX, which is outputting proper power. If I pull that off, goes back down, there's no output. So, what now happens is I can pull that off the quad. Put the antenna back on. All right, I put this little uh, whip antenna back on it. And now what it'll actually do is I'll press the right once. It shows me a scanning mode. Press it again. This is now the relative comparison mode. So right now it has not been set to a relative amount, therefore showing plus 23 decibels. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna plug this back in. All right, I'm gonna put this tester pretty much close to it. All right, so now what you do is you press up, it defines the zero point. So at this point, the reading is now always relative to what this VTX was at that reading. So what you will notice too, is depending on your relative distance, you will get different readings. So you have to be relatively consistent. Um, but if I always stay about one inch away from that antenna, it should give me a pretty accurate reading compared to this quad. So now I get a reading that's zeroed in on this quad. What I'll do is I'll grab another one. All right, so this quad right here is one that I've set to 200 milliwatts. So what I expect is that when I power this up and then I test it with my tester, it should show a significantly higher decibel rating than my prior quad. 
So anyway, let's fire this up again. Put it here. You can see it's plus 18 decibels. So going by that output, it's significantly higher than what I was having on other quads. So if we were doing testing as a race director, I'd say, you know what? This quad is way overpowered compared to the other one. Something's either wrong with the VTX or it's set to the improper megawatts or milliwatts. And as I mentioned, this is currently set to 200. So that's actually showing me the correct thing. All right, so now if I knew another test, this quad is also set to 25 milliwatts and it's being powered by a tramp. So now, Plug this in. So now if you see this here, it's, uh, it's reading roughly the same output, which tells me that this is a very good, you know, VTX is working just as well as my Unify. So this is again saying this is roughly uh, the correct amount of output. And again, that's really all we're doing in this different mode. This is the Joe Scully mode. If it's around the same number within maybe plus or minus six decibels, you can tell that it's outputting the correct amount. And if it's way too high or way too low, that tells you where the problem is. So that's the way this is intended to be used. Quick readings, you know if the quad's good. In this case, both of these quads are good. And the one that was set to 200 milliwatts was too high. So that's really the benefit of this from a race director standpoint. Very easy to test um, and, and see what's, what's wrong with someone's vision. So this actually came in real handy at the last race we were running. What ended up happening is we had uh, two quads in particular where the pilot was complaining that they were getting blown out by other pilots. And then the, the timing system was also having a hard time picking, up, picking them up on certain laps. So what I was able to do is I was able to use this meter, calibrate it to my own personal quad, make sure that it was set pro uh, properly because I'd already tested that this has been good at 25 milliwatts, and then compare it to their quad. And it was showing me that their quad was outputting negative 16 decibels compared to mine, and that would turn out to be the root of their problem. And at the time, they are actually running a Unify VTX. So even though they were saying, look, it's good I have a Unify, it was a two-year-old Unify that maybe had an issue with it. Um, they ended up switching out to a different quad and that solved all their video issues. Um, in another case, I was able to use this as well, identify that the person who's complaining that others are blowing them out was in fact the one with the weak VTX. So this was really helpful as far as a race director goes. It made the conversation extremely simple to say, here's why you're having issues. It's not someone else's fault, it's your own. Which gets me to why I think this is actually a really valuable tool for yourself as well. When I first tested this, I went through all my quads and I knew it was calibrated from the factory. So I was running it in the mode where I was using this adapter and I went from one quad to the next. And what I found is that a bunch of my quads were putting out significantly fewer milliwatts than they were supposed to be doing at 25 milliwatts. So what I ended up doing is I swapped out the VTXs that were bad and then all of a sudden I had perfect output again from those quads. So that means that when I went to that race, the chance of me having bad video and it being my fault is slim to none. To me, that's invaluable as a racer. Vision is so important to everything we do that knowing that I am not the problem is very critical. Knowing that my quads are in good working order, to me, this is money well spent. And I think I spent $79 on this. So just knowing that my quads and VTXs are working properly, it provided me $79 worth of comfort. And that's also why I'd say that it's also valuable to someone who's looking to fly in you know, freestyle, long range settings, or even um, abandoned buildings, knowing that your VTXs are outputting a proper amount of power, that you're not gonna be bleeding onto other people, and that you should have good vision is critical to the success of us in, our, in this hobby. Um, vision is just the key to everything we do. Without vision, we can't fly at all. So because of that, I think this has been a fantastic investment. And like I said, it really made the conversation simple as a race director. It really helped me make sure that all my quads were good. And like I said, I had to swap out one of the VTXs in one of my quads, but at least then I knew my, all my quads and VTXs were good going to the race. And last but not least, someone who's looking to go fly long range wants to make sure they're getting the proper output from their VTX, make sure it's still in shape. This is a fantastic investment. So kudos to a measurement RC. I highly recommend this. $79 seems like a really good bargain to me. And uh, yeah, I'm just really happy with it. So real quick, there's really not much to it. We got the power button like we showed you. We have the menu system. You can adjust the menu in 50 megahertz increments. So basically what you do is when you're testing, set it to the closest megahertz that you have. So if you're doing 5740, set it to 5750. I always do it in average, but you can do it in peak or average. 
And then if you add an attenuation, so if you want to test for higher outputs, you can add an attenuator onto this device and then put that in here so it can self-correct the value. Um, and that's basically all there is to it. And then here's just going to show you the different output levels, what your current setting is, 5,800 megawatts, what your milliwatt output is, and your decibel readings. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is. That that's pretty much all there is to it. Very simple device, but yet very helpful. I like it a lot. Uh, last thing I want to show real quick is there is a USB port on the back. So all that is is you plug it in just like any other device. Plug it into a USB output, and that's how you charge the device. The device itself should last about eight hours on a single charge. I think that's really good. And just like I said, I've been real happy with this. Wanted to share it with you guys. I'll leave a link down below if you want to check it out yourself. But uh, I definitely highly recommend it. Anyways, guys, I'm going to leave it right there. And as always, I'll catch you all next time.